Hi, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Welcome to my video series where we tackle the tough personal finance questions asked by Australian expats. Now today I want to talk about private health insurance. We're going to cover off some of the key questions that Aussie expats ask. What do we do with our private health cover back in Australia? What do we do now that we're offshore? What do we do if we have some cover provided by our employer? And what do we need to think about if we're thinking of moving home? So let's get into it. Now before we get into some of the common questions, I'd just like to outline some of the common providers that Australian expats utilise, particularly in Singapore. So we have Bupa, Raffles Health, we have Interglobal, we have Cigna, we have Aetna, we have AXA, we have a wide range of different health insurers. Now there's no one size fits all, they all have their pros and cons, they vary in price. Yes, some of them can be very expensive, but when you're comparing to private health cover back in Australia particularly, you do need to build in the Medicare levy. Often when we're comparing private health cover back home in Australia to what it costs us here in Singapore, quite often we'll ignore that levy cost, which we're obviously not paying as Australian expats. So do factor that in when you're making a comparison. So let's get into some of the more common questions. The first common question that we get asked by Australian expats in Singapore and our clients is I've already got cover provided by my employer. Is there anything else I need to think about? Now the answer in most cases is yes. First and foremost, you want to think about, particularly if you have family here, is does your employer provided cover actually cover your family? And if so, what does it actually cover them for? We find with, particularly with a lot of Australian expats, the company provided policies are great for the basics. But if you're looking for any extras, dental, optical, whatever else it might be, you may find that you need to have a bit of a backup or a top up plan just in case, or to cover those extras. Now that may mean taking out a personal health insurance plan for you and your family with one of the uh, more expat suitable providers such as a Bupa or Axa or otherwise, that can cover you for those extras. Now to avoid overpaying and to avoid ridiculously high premiums, you may find that building in a higher excess is a good way to reduce that cost. Again, it's important to seek advice here and make sure that you are correctly filling any gaps in your existing policies. The second most common question that we get asked by Australian expats in Singapore is where do I go for advice? Who do I go and ask about private health cover? Who's going to give me the right solution? And the answer is you want to find someone, an insurance broker, an advisor, who can deal with a wide range of different health insurance providers. There is no one size fits all. The right provider now may not be the right provider in three years time. They're always offering different discounts, different pricing, and there are always changes in the industry. So by working with an advisor, with a broker who can look at all or the majority of health insurers in Singapore, you can have a bit of peace of mind that you're getting the right advice for you and your family. The third common question that we get asked by Aussies in Singapore is what do I do with my private health cover back in Australia? Now, if you still have it, if it's still active, that's certainly a great starting point because what you'll often find you can do is actually suspend that private health insurance policy back home, which may be for six, 12 months, 18 months, or even longer in some cases, and make a payment at the end of each suspension. Now, some health insurers will allow you to continue to roll that forward. Others may require you to cancel it. So it's important to do your homework here. But the benefit of just suspending your private health insurance policy is that if and when you decide to return to Australia, you may find that it's very easy to simply resume it. So any pre-existing health conditions, gotten a little bit older being offshore, less healthy, develop some sort of sickness or health condition, you'll often find that that doesn't prohibit you actually restarting your previous health insurance. As opposed to if you went back with nothing in place, then it's going to be a new application and you may find that they either provide a loading, i.e. charge you a bit more for your health insurance premium, 
or flat out reject your application altogether. The fourth common question that we get asked is I'm thinking of moving back to Australia, what do I do about my private health cover? Now firstly, if you've got an international health insurance policy with one of the providers rather out of Singapore, then chances are, particularly if you're moving back to Australia for good, and that's where you plan to spend your future, paying for an international health insurance policy is not going to be a financially sensible move. You're going to be paying an awful lot of money for a health insurance policy that covers you all over the globe when you're going to be spending all of your time in Australia, barring holidays, of course. So what should you do? Well, before you cancel your international health insurance policy, you should look at taking out something locally in Australia. You can either speak to a broker, an advisor in Australia, or go direct to the health insurers and work out which is going to be the best option for you and your family. Everything's online these days, so it's quite easy to do a comparison across the different health insurance providers. Once you've found a new policy that suits you, fits your goals, then you can look to cancel your old policies. But please don't do it before, because you may find yourself without cover at all. So they're my four top tips when it comes to health insurance, the four most common questions. I hope they've been helpful. I hope they've shed some light on the health insurance industry. Thank you very much for joining us. If you have anything to add, or you have any questions that we haven't yet covered, fire them through, we'd love to hear from you and maybe we can even turn them into a future video. Thank you again for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.